Hi everyone, it's Agnes. Welcome to another interview. Today it's with my lovely friend, Phil Ryan. Phil Ryan is in Sydney as well, just like me. We're in our different locations, but in the same city. So welcome, Phil. Thank you, Agnes, and what a joy and pleasure it is to be here. And uh, I've been excited, looking forward to this. Yeah. You know, yeah. And uh, it's so nice to be uh, invited by a Someone I consider a special friend. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. I, I actually, let me just have a quick look. I didn't check um, your, we actually, I read your story out uh, within the last two weeks, I think. Yes, yes. I know the last time I checked, the viewers on it was about 1,700 at the time. So I'm going to have a little quick check now because it was, yeah, you're over 2,000 views on your story and it was a very well-received story and I wanted people to meet you and I know that your story really hit home with a lot of people and I, yeah, I mean, you and I, I will give the viewers a little bit of background. You and I actually met around 2014 when I did my coaching course and you were from the year before me. Yes. And yeah, we ended up creating a Sydney coaches group and that's how I met you in person. And you and I only lived about two kilometres away from each other, which we found out not long after that. And, um, uh, and then I was writing a book and then your story went into uh, my book. And yes. I know a lot of people said it was the most incredible story in the book. Many people wrote and told me that. And so I wanted to get you on here today because not only are you a coach like me, but you're also a human being on having a personal journey. And I wanted to talk to you about your journey more face to face and you know, share as much or as little as you want. You start wherever you want, whatever you want to share with the viewers. So go ahead. Over to you. Well, uh, I decided to become a coach because I thought to my, I've, 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 I've got qualifications in counselling, both in um, grief and all in three, three uh, I did three uh, special studies. I did grief and loss, relationship, and abuse counselling, yeah. all because I had experienced those in my journey in life. And I just thought, well, I've, I've gone through this. I've trod this road. It was a stony road. I kicked my, kicked my toes and stumbled a couple of times. And I just thought, well, what, what, what's, what's the purpose of all this? Do I have a purpose to serve? And I looked back at my life. And I had heart surgery as a child that was diagnosed when I was two. I was operated on at eight years of age. I nearly died on the operating table. And I pulled through. And mum always believed that I pulled through, my mother, because I maybe had a purpose to serve. Well, with, with the continuing journey in, in uh, learning to value and love myself as a gay man, because before that, before that uh, I allowed that to unfold and happen, I used to go around thinking if people knew I was gay, they would hate me. Mm. And it was an awful, it was like picking up a sack of bricks and carrying it around, a heavy load to carry. And I'd always be watching how I walked, how I talked, how I, how I dressed, how I behaved, my gestures and all that sort of thing. Whereas now here I am using hand language. I, it's part of me. It's part of me. It's, yeah. so, it's something that I can be happy about because yeah. that's me. Yes. And, and what I had to learn was my sexuality is only a 10% factor of my life. The other 90% makes up 100%. So I've got something wonderful to go to the world plus this experience of... Uh, Connecting with people in pain. Yeah. And one of the most painful things I ever experienced was to lose a child who I thought was my saving grace because I fathered a child, which a priest told me, I was, as, as you revealed in the story. 
uh, maintain that I was on a road to hell and if I didn't, didn't uh, do something to conquer this. And he said, for, you know what he said as I walked out the door? He said, I just want, want to say to you the final thing. Uh, just these, these are his words. I strongly suggest to you that you go and father a child and all this shit in your head, excuse the language, all this shit in your head will go away. But they, they, they were his words. Yeah. And he said, and just, just, to, uh, just to ask God to help you, I'll say a special prayer for you at Mass in the morning. Here I am, a Catholic, and, I, and shattered. I walked away. And I, I fought and fought against that, married a child, ma ma married a, a lovely woman. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I just think because of my experience, I have a little added uh, uh, development of a gift of connection with people, of being able to uh, empathise. Empathise, not sympathise, empathise. Really, really feel what they're feeling because I've experienced it. Without, without going into too much story, I mean, here I am telling you a story and, and the last thing I would do in counselling with people is just say, yes, I can relate to that. Mm. I, I, I empathise with you. I understand where you've been. I've had similar experiences and leave it at that so that I allow them space to open up but have that empathy and that understanding yeah. because uh, I think... Well, one thing I learned in counselling, the greatest thing you offer a person is uh, your ability to listen. Listen empathically and then reflect back to them what, they, what they've uh, expressed with you and develop a rapport. Yeah. And I've been able to cultivate that in my time and uh, just experience and just, uh, just treading the path, so to speak. Yeah. But I look back at my life and I think, yes, it's been a rocky road. Yeah. And <clears throat> here I am, I'm nearly, nearly at my three score and tenth year. And a wise man, a 92-year-old man once said to me, when I was going through the loss of my little child, Roseanne, she died in my arms from a brain tumour, he said to me in the aftermath of grief when I was just so shattered, I felt... I, I, I choked me. Uh, I talk about it and it choked me. And he just said, stay calm, stay calm. But he's, and we had a lovely, lovely long conversation. His name was Andre, a, a Frenchman, incidentally. Andre. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice coincidence. Here we are talking to a French woman. <laughs> How lovely. Anyway, and Andre said to me, he said, and these words just stuck with me. He said, a soul grows through the crucible of pain. Now, that, that was pretty profound when I heard that. And I heard, oh, wow. Oh. He said, so just, just be aware that in time when you heal, he said, you'll have armory and an extra something that you can offer to life. Mm. Well, I clinged on to that because of, here's my mother saying, oh, he's been saved for something. Yeah. So now, now, my desire before I leave this, leave this planet and this incarnation is, is to just be able to reach out, uplift and support people on their journey. Yeah. And I've, I've learned techniques through, through counselling and coaching that I can utilise and um, I, uh, I love doing it. Mm. I've done a lot of voluntary work. Can you tell, tell me a bit about, because you and I talked about this when we were having lunch the other day, about your oh, we did, yes. work in the gay community because of what you'd experienced, you know, in the, well, in Australia in the 60s and 70s, it was not a very gay-friendly place. Um, oh, no. no. And you were right, you know, you were right smack bang in the middle of that time. So can you share a little bit with, People like because you've worked with gay people, coaching and and helping people in lots of different capacities. Can you tell a little bit about that kind of work that you've done? All right. Okay. I was in the midst of the uh, HIV epidemic in the eighties. Yeah. 
And uh, I went to a personal development weekend called Discovery. Just, just to uh, connect with the community and to unload and to come away to learn something. And it, it started, it was a very intensive weekend. It started on a Friday night, finishing about 8 o'clock on a Sunday night, you know, complete or during that length of time. And in that class, in that group, rather, the group, there were about eight men who were afflicted with HIV. I had never really come face to face with it. Uh, the epidemic was, was, was really tar- starting to take hold in the community. Mm. And it just, it just taught, it just made me, made me want to go and do something. So I used to go and volunteer at a uh, community uh, Sunday lunch to help HIV people. Mm. It was open to HIV people to come. It was run by Metropolitan Community Church. I, I mentioned in the book Metropolitan Community Church. Well, they had, a, had a, uh, an, an outreach and offered a Sunday lunch for HIV people. Plus, they also had a group called Encali. And Encali was... Uh, a volunteer group where you went and helped people. You're like a, 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 a support person. And I had two people. I, had, I, had, I looked after David and I looked after Peter. Just just knocking on, just going round to their houses and doing little things, walking their dog, doing shopping, and taking, taking Peter. Peter was up and Peter was a lively person. But David, on the other hand, two, two people a week I'd go. David, David was really sick. Have you ever heard of Carposi sarcoma? It's a, a blood disease that HIV people get and they come, it, it uh, affects their skin and they become all very black. It's like they're black and bruised okay. all over. Anyway, long story short, long story short, I sat with David as he was dying mm. because I had been through that with with. with Rosebud, my little girl, yeah. I, I could, I put myself, mm. I, I had the army to, to overcome it, to, to, um, to go and serve, as it were. And I, I, love, I love doing this because I just thought, well, I've been through this, yeah. I, I, I can relate. Yeah. Now, here we go. There's two people. Can, can I interrupt but, you for a sec, Phil? At this well, stage... Had you come out as a gay man at this point? Or were you I had come out as a gay man. I had come out as a gay man. I had okay. come out. And, and it was just something like, uh, as a former Catholic, MCC Church just, just validated me. Mm. Validated me because, it, because Metropolitan Community Church was founded by a gay man named Troy Perry, which, which I, I share in your story. Yep. And Troy Perry, Troy Perry was ostracised and victimised by a Baptist church in sub in the uh, from North. He was from North Carolina, in in America, and he um, he oh he was a real rebel. He was a demonstrator and he was a community you know a community uh, organiser and got people together. And anyway. Metropolitan Community Church started with seven people in the living room on a Sunday because all these people had been victimised and ostracised by black and white fundamentalists who, 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 you know, just, just, I want to say, uh, were very horrible to them. Okay, that aside. But I found found a lot of peace and a lot of uh, upliftment because I read Troy's books, uh, which I shared in the story, Do Not Be Afraid. And one thing that um, the pastor of my church, in a talk with him, just a one-on-one church, he said, go home and read read uh, the gospel verse, John 3.16. He said, in that, in that gospel verse, he said, you'll read, uh, whosoever believeth and trusts in me shall not perish but enjoy life everlasting. Well, I just wanted, I wanted a life in the moment. And those words I clung to. Mm. 
and whosoever. Yeah. Whosoever. And he said, and as I walked as I walked to go out the door, he said, he said, just just remember Jesus is a mate of yours. Take hold of his hand and, and ask him. And you know, and rather rather than as I left the door. You're on a pathway to hell. You go, go and father a child and, and everything will change, which it didn't. Yeah. And, you know, I, uh, but I had to go through that. I had to tread that path. Mm. I had to really walk that path, fall over the, on the stony road, pick myself up and, mm. you know, put a Band-Aid on the scratches, so to, as it were, and, and continue on. And even that was painful, I knew, you know, I just could really connect with the gay people, the gay men that I, I served, yeah. because I could walk basically without understanding, basically be a companion on their journey and walk a mile in their shoes, as it were. Well, in a way, Phil, your generation was the generation that started smashing all this prejudice. Oh, yes, you were, yes. You were right in the middle of all the victimisation and you were kind of right there when it started to, you know, and Louise Hay around the 80s when she did all that stuff with um, the... That's 80s. right. She did a lot of healing work. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she was... Still thinking that you could catch it or, you know, and she didn't care. She went in and she loved them and she hugged them and she gave to them and that people were always saying, you know, you can't do that and... It was so ridiculous. When you look back, you know, she and she knew, you knew, and there were many people reaching out and helping. Yeah. I mean, to be well, sick and victimised when you're sick must be absolutely horrendous. Uh, oh, it was. Well, well David, I'll, I'll just say David. Da 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 David's left this world, so I, I'm at liberty to talk to him. Well, you know, you don't know his surname, but David. Yeah. David broke down in my arms many nights, many times. And I just had, uh, you know, I had the strength of some, I had a, had a strength within me that could say, mm. all right, buddy, I'm here for you, you know? Yeah. And then, but Peter, Peter, on the other hand, P P Peter was a real gay boy. He, 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 he had, I, I love to dance, you know, and I go around, he does dance music, and we'd, we'd, we'd dance around the room and all this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> just because that was his personality. And me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I love going to discos and yeah. freezing out under the flashing lights and all this, all, all this sort of thing. <laughs> so, so, so he, he, you know, he and I got on like a house on fire. Yeah. But you know what? You know what? He taught me one very, very, one big, one big wonderful thing in life. Yeah. Laughter is the best medicine. Laughter is the best medicine. I'd go around and we'd sit down and we'd watch funny videos. <laughs> he absolutely loved the Vicar of Dibley. Yeah. <laughs> he loved that. And we'd, we'd go around and he'd go around on a Monday night just to watch the Vicar of Dibley with him. And, that. and we'd, we'd roll around the place laughing, you know, and, and then he'd tell me, tell me funny things. But he was a real, he was a real, um, uh, what, what did what did he call himself? Oh, he, he said I'm a, I'm a I'm a, a really oh anyway. Long story short, he was a really out there queen, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really out there, happy go lucky, cheer, cheer buddy. Yeah. Whereas poor David, poor David, because of this suck, yeah. post his sarcoma and the debilitating effect on him. Yeah. He 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 you know he, he was hospitalised and he eventually passed away and and I you know I I experienced that with him. Yeah. But uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, Peter was determined. He said, "No, this is not going to beat me. I can succeed. I, I can overcome this. Yeah. I can do this. I haven't got a bad as bad a a, a, a dose. I'll put it that way, if I can use those words. Yeah. I'm not afflicted. Now these were words. I'm not afflicted." Like other people, yeah. and I want to really, really come this. Well, I was this. This was happening when I lived in Wollongong. That's south of Sydney, eighty k south of Sydney. Yeah. And I looked after these two men through a group called ACON, the AIDS Council of New South Wales. Okay. And uh, um, yeah, sadly, David passed away because because he got really got. 
Yeah. He was one of the early early people. He and he went down, but eventually, with with all the other research and and uh, development of of, uh, of medicinal uh, uh, drug therapies, <coughs> that's it. Drug therapies. Anyway, Peter, Peter, and I kept in touch. And guess what? Peter eventually, eventually, got on his feet. And did conquer it because he said, "I can do it. I can do it." That that was his that was his mantra. I can do it. I'm going to do it. I want to do it. Life's got too much to offer me. Wow. And he 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 he, he was out there and at it. And and in, in the and he's you know what his motto was? I'll fight the good fight. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Fight the good fight. Wow, good on you. And anyway, that 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 gave me tremendous encouragement to be there as a supporter and a loyal friend. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he he eventually married, yeah. married his partner, wow. and they now live in Victoria very happily. And and uh, we send Christmas cards and nice. you know just just in touch. And I, I had I had uh, that. Australian has is that since Australia has legalized gay marriage. Yes. Yeah. Uh, wow. No. Before. Before oh, that. Wow. That. Yeah. He, wow, and, it just happened. Like not. And, long hey, long. Hey, and you know, Angie and I. Angie and I got married in in um, twenty ten. Yeah. Before before it was legalized. Great. But but you know what? You know when I when I was in the Catholic Church, we were told. That if you don't marry in a Catholic church, you're not married in the sight of God. <laughs> yeah. You're not married in the sight of God because you don't down will go yeah. and, and can have a ceremony in, in a uh, stone structure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that really ran against my grain because I was, and you know, here's the irony at school. At school, I was taught by nuns that God is everywhere. Yeah. And we are all made in the image and likeness of God. So we're, you know, I just I know. It's such a good I thought, what a, what a, excuse me, what a crock of the yeah. proverbial. <laughs> what a crock of. For those that are not from Australia, that means that's a load of. Rubbish in simple non. Can I use the word bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. A nun, a nun told me this. It's a load of chewed up grass and water. And what's chewed up grass and water? Bullshit. <laughs> chewed up grass and water. <laughs> but anyway, this is the thing I love about you: is you. I, I still remember that part in your story where you talked about that you'd had a succession of relationships and every single one of them, there was something that just, you know, something wasn't just quite right with the progression from your marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about you separated from your marriage and then you went to live on your, you know, by yourself as a single man. Can you tell the story from there? Cause that, that, that Jesus moment on the middle of the bed, I still remember. <laughs> I love that bit. So, yeah. All right. All good, right. That's a good moment. That moment just between you and the guy hanging on the wall was a good moment. <laughs> okay. Well, well, Greg, Greg, the pastor of the church in Sydney, as I left, yeah. he, he mentioned John 3.16, but he also said, okay, I want you to believe that, that Jesus is your mate. These yeah. are his words. Jesus is your mate. He'll walk with you. So he said, reach out and take hold of the hand of Jesus yeah. to help pull you through, so to speak. Yeah. And I just said, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. You know, there was no comparison to what the priest said to me when I was 18 years of age. Yeah. You're on a pathway to hell. Yeah. Well, well, I experienced hell. Hell on earth. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's the past that has no future. There's the only, only, only place where life happens is now. Here we are. This, this, is, this is life happening as I communicate with you. So live in it. Yeah. Live in it. You know, the power of now. Have you ever read Eckhart? Can I just digress for a moment? Have you ever read Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle's book? I have. The I Power just, of Now? I just couldn't get into it. <laughs> you couldn't get into it. Oh, I, I loved it. 
I know a lot of people love it and I tried to read it again. I just could, I just didn't take root. So yeah. I will put it down below though, because I know a lot of people love it. So I will post. Yeah. Okay. That. Okay. All right. Basically, well, you know, it, it just just amounts to being present to what what you experience in the moment. Live in the moment. Yes. Live fully in the moment. Yeah. Because that's where life's happening for you. Yeah. And and value it. Learn from it. Whatever whatever it's got to teach you. Yeah. But also also uh, don't. And the past the past is a place of no future. Oh boy, did I have to learn that the hard way? <laughs> yeah. you know, but because those those ugly gremlins, yeah. that those those little 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 devils that sit on your shoulder yeah. would come come up all the time. Yeah. And you know, and um, <laughs> just learning to to temper to uh, temper those experiences to to. Uh, Really learn value from them. Really, really learn what I had to learn in in, in the on the journey. Yeah. And ah, oh, yes. But well, I look back now. Although it was although it was a a, a a painful road, I I feel ah oh, well on that journey of pain. Yeah, on that journey of heartache. Heartache. Now, that's the word. I'll use the word heartache. Because pain, pain seems like, like you've got, you know, you're really sore and all that sort of thing. Yeah. But what, what, uh, what I learned through that, that there is someone, uh, well, there's someone of value coming towards you on your journey. Mm. And you know what? Little did I know that a wonderful transgender person my, Angela is her name. You, you know, you've met Angela. I call her my angel, absolutely. Bill, you, have, just, one, you have one of the best relationships I know. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And, thank and I, you. And I've been around you. You can feel the just there's just a really lovely energy between you. There's a respect. There's an understanding. And that's not talked about. It's just the vibe. Okay, you, you 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 feel that vibe. Well, that's lovely. That's that that's really nice. That's really nice to know. And ah, oh, but you know what? You know you know you know the wonderful thing. You know the wonderful thing. I say Holy Spirit. You know because because we're all body, mind, and spirit. And Jesus, yeah. Jesus is spirit. Yeah. Holy Spirit has guided us together. Because hey, oh, I won't begin. I won't begin to tell you her story. Yeah. It was a really rough road to the point where she had to seek refuge in a home yeah. for transgender people because, because of the victimisation she'd suffered. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that because, you know, I'm yeah. not at liberty to, to go into detail and, 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 and that's, that's, that's private yeah. between us. Okay, but, but you know the loveliest thing with, with Angela and I? <laughs> Here we are. I said, oh, let, let's have a courtship for about 12 months. Let's really get to know each other. Let's take things slowly because I have two very special children, yeah. Amelia and my son, Michael. Yeah. And, you know, he, let me tell you about those, those two. Amelia, she's a cabaret performer, gets up on the stage and, and struts her stuff and, 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 uh, and does lo lo lots of funny parodies. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, and yes, she, she, she's quite, 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 quite a, quite a good uh, cabaret performer. Michael, on the other hand, Michael struts his stuff on a stage doing heavy metal music, and he's <laughs> out front, you know. And and really, they've both got the talent. They can connect with with their audience, yeah. and it's just it's just wonderful. And I get so proud seeing them yeah. because you know that they have to deal with my stuff, yeah, my stuff. But the thing I value so much, Margie. Margie, my former wife, we realised that, hey, we could no longer go on in the relationship. It was too too painful, too painful for both of us. There was just no connection. Yes. And we had the right to fulfilment. Yeah. We yep. Had, each had the right. It was our, our, our godly right, our earthly right, to be fulfilled as yep. people in happy relationships. Yeah. So we decided to separate and... 
although the journey of separation, you know, the separation divorce is painful, yeah. we both decided that there's two very precious people in our lives, the children, yeah. plus what we've known in relationship. Mm. Value that. Yeah. Value that. And value the journey we've both been on mm. because the pain of it has taught us a lot. Mm. You, you, can, you, can wallow, you can wallow in the mire or you can, you can pick yourself out of it and say, right, right, there is, there is brightness ahead. Let's, let's go towards, towards the sun on the horizon, so to speak, and, and, and f- go after it. Mm. Well, we, we decided that. Now we're the best of friends. I know. We're the best of friends. And you have great relationships with your kids, with your ex-wife, with your, your current wife. You have got such great, rela- you have a billboard for great relationships. You've got that part. And I, I want, if you have time, I'd love you to share what you think is, really makes that work. What, what do you think are the qualities that are needed to have all these great relationships, especially with your, your wife, current wife? What do you think, what could you what, say to the viewers? What would you say is, is a key to that? Yeah. Okay. A key to that. All right, all right. When, when I was going through a lot, a lot of the, the turmoil, a lot of the heartache, a lot of the hardship, a lot of the process of divorce, I kept lawyers out of it because law, lawyers, law, law, lawyers can, you know, they're opportunists. I won't, I won't expand on that, but I decided no. We had a, 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 um, an agreed... Uh, Settlement, okay. you know, monetary settlement, property settlement, as like, and we, we both were able to sit down and talk about it and get one, one, one solicitor to, to, to validate that and then that got ratified in the court. Yeah, and and we, we, we were determined to go through that because we, did, we didn't want the, the, cr- the, the crap, I'll say it, the crap that that, 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 that creates. Yes. That, that was a key thing. That, that communication, that, that v- valuing and respecting yep. your per- the person who's travelled that journey with you, yes. even though you've got to a point where you, you do have to separate because your, your, your soul has to grow. Mm. Your soul has to grow. And in that soul growth, you, 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 you're empowered. Yep. It's, uh, even, though, even though it's painful. Here I, I, and I can speak that looking back because, as I said, I'm, I'm nearly, nearly in my, near my 70th year. Yeah. But that experience. And also, oh, fundamentally, fundamentally, you need to develop a healthy relationship with self. Yeah. You know, instead of going around and saying, I am a gay man and, oh, oh if people knew that, they would hate me, they would delight me. No, I, I, I learned through Louise Hay. Yeah. Louise Hay reading her books. Oh, she she empowered me. I, I I couldn't get enough of Louise Hay when I first started on my on my development, you know, and, and, and my growth yeah. journey. Yeah. Uh, she taught me a an affirmation. I'm a wonderful, valuable, worthwhile person. Um and I go forward daily in life. There we are. I'm a wonderful, valuable, worthwhile person. I go forward daily in life, you know, and, and go forward. And don't look back. You know, you hear, hear things, don't look back. Don't look back on the past. And in, in a, uh, it was Discovery Weekend, you know, I just mentioned I did Discovery Weekend with the gay community. Yeah. They, that was emphasised, don't look back, the past has no future because a lot of people get stuck in it. You know, it's, it's, an, awful, it's an awful snare, an awful entrapment. And, oh, thing, thing for me, when, when those little gremlins get on your shoulder and make you rah, 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 and you start to think about so-and-so and all, all, the, all, the, all the shit you've copped and all <laughs> Pardon me, folks, for saying this, but I mean, I mean I'm just going to put it out there. All, 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 all the, all, oh, I substitute another word. Garbage you've had to cop. That's more polite, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, 
anyway, anyway, you're just, you just try and stay in the moment. And this is what I say. I surrender. I release. I give over. I allow God. Invite, you know, because you're talking to the God within. Yeah. Let that spirit within you, that, that, that divine presence within you, come out, manifest. I surrender, I give over, I allow God. Yeah. And I bless the person with peace, joy and happiness. Yeah. And then, but you know what? But you've got to seize that moment and do it. Yeah. Because those little, those little gremlins can be crippling to you in, in, in your mind. In your mind, yeah. In your mind, they control your thoughts. And that's, that's how I be present, or that's how I learn to be present, just to release and let go, release and let go. Yeah. You know, and the word, you know, we all struggle with the word allow. Yes. But by saying that, you allow divine energy to come in, mm. source energy, you know, the, the energy of the universe to come in mm. and, and empower you to move forward. Yeah. That, that's been my... Biggest lesson, not looking at the past because the past has no future. Here we are in this moment. I'm talking to you and I, my trust is that in this moment now, people can take something of value yeah. as they listen, listen to me sharing with you. Yeah. You know, because seize the moment, seize the moment, seize the day, just value it and just uh, don't, don't, don't give it negative energy. Yeah. Negative, no. That's true. T t turn, turn it around. Yeah, you just stop and you... Just stop. You redirect. Stop. Re stop. Take, redirect, redirect your thoughts. Take, take hold of, of, of what, what's going on. And boy, oh boy, was that a lesson for me. Yeah. I used to get tripped up all the time. Yeah. And in, if you let, let, let's face it, I will say this, I'll be honest, in the early stages of Margaret's and my separation, yes, the stuff, the stuff was a barrier. The stuff of life we had to deal with was a barrier. But when we looked at those two beautiful little children, you yeah. know, at, at that stage, our focus was on them. Yeah. Phil, what decade did you get divorced? Just, so, just from the timeline. Okay, okay. We got divorced mid nineties. Mid nineties. Okay. Mid nineties. Yeah. 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 So things had progressed in terms of people being more acceptance of gay people oh. at that point. It was sort of twenty or thirty years later from when yes, you yes. Did it with the priest, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It oh. was. I, I, that happened when I was eighteen, and I, I, I se Margaret and I separated when I was forty-five. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was 45. So, you know, I travelled travel the journey. We both travelled that painful journey of, of losing Roseanne. I mean, that, 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 was, that, was, that was sheer agony. Yeah. That was sheer agony. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow. Look, I'm, I just found your story still to this day because I read it recently and I re-experienced it. it. You know, there was so much... Um, because of the time that you were born in, because of the country you were born in, because of what was going on in the world when you were born, the lack of acceptance, the, you know, the rejection, the victimisation, all that stuff. I mean, things today are obviously definitely I'm not going to say they're perfect in that area by any means, but they've progressed. And I think that, it's people like you that have done what you've done, work on yourself, the more self-acceptance, the more you give to people in the community that are still struggling with those issues. It's like you help people leg up because you kind of leg up a person at a time. The collective consciousness changes yes. amongst the gay community feeling more self-love and amongst the other non-gay community people letting go of all their prejudice. So it's like both camps of people are progressing simultaneously. That's right. That's right. I, I, I look at it this way. I, I, think, I think it's a process of evolution in man's consciousness. Yep. It is. It is. Because when you stop and think, 
I participated in all the marriage equality marches, and I, I was I was uh, did my little bit. I, I wasn't wasn't carrying banners and you know and, and being a, a rebel. Or but... wearing a g-string. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could say something, but a still tongue is it makes for a wise head. <laughs> I ha I just had a flash of you wearing a banner and like waving a flag, having a banner and wearing a G string. It just flashed in. Well, 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 well I, I, I don't. <laughs> you never see me in chat and chaps, stats, you know, leathers. <laughs> Not into that. And. <laughs> But but I have marched several times in the in the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras parade. Yeah. Have you ever been to a Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi I have, parade? Yeah, I have. Oh, been isn't the energy it's fabulous? March? March, yes. March every yes. year, yeah. yeah. And this year, this year, I um, I, I was there, and I, I got over the time I got got to to know a lot of the original seventy eight group. Have you heard about the Sydney seventy eighters? No. Okay, the Sydney 78ers on the uh, 20, 24th of uh, June, yeah. my sister's birthday, yeah. they, marched, they marched down Oxford Street, just in, in a, 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 they got the permit to march, they yeah. marched from Taylor Square, the top, the top of Oxford Street, yeah. down to uh, Hyde Park and had a rally. Yeah. And... <clears throat> Then they decided, oh, we, we know, they, they had a lot of support from people around and then they decided to march up to King's Cross, up William Street. You know William Street in the city? Yeah. March up and met at the Ellen Main Fountain. Then the police turned on them and bashed them and, and put, them in, put them in jail overnight. And you know the terrible thing that happened? The people that were put in jail overnight, their names were printed on the front page of the Sydney Morning, and not the Sydney Morning Herald, the Daily Telegraph, Telegraph, on the Monday morning to, to besmirch their characters. Anyway, they, I, I have got to know several of them. And I, 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 I went to a conference recently at Sydney University yeah. where they shared things. And we all, as a gay community, worked on ways to uh, present a positive image, a more positive image. And there were, there were some, some trans, young transgender people there. And oh boy, boy, oh boy. They, they, the growth journey that they've had and, and just being all, all together in a community and, 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 and being able to sit down and talk at an intellectual level, well, not, not, not that I'm no intellectual, but talk, talk sensibly. <laughs> Amongst each other, with with our discord, it was just lovely. It was just lovely. The community came together, and we want we just want to build a really positive image mm. of gay people in Sydney. Yeah, and uh, and yeah. you know I've also done I also did some voluntary work with Sydney Gay and Lesbian Counselling Service. Yeah, I ran a, I ran a um, Saturday afternoon program for for young uh, struggling gay people coming out. Yep. And it was just a space where they were free to be and, and we could talk. And I facilitated that and just allowed them space to open up. Mm. And I also ran, ran a couple of groups for men to be able to open up. And But that, that was a guided thing. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I found, I found all that, that very invaluable experience. Yep. But the, the, the most wonderful thing I think that I did was really going to the coal face of life where, where I encountered David yeah. and Peter. Plus also on a Sunday to go, go and prepare a meal yeah. for people to come in and, and, and sit down and enjoy. Mm. Enjoy a Sunday lunch that, that uh, they didn't have to go and cook. And a lot of them, a lot of them were really poverty struck because, because of the expense of, their, of their, their drug therapies and, and they couldn't get employment. They were living on social security. And all this sort of thing, mm. and um, so that 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 they were valuable years that I, I, I gave gave to life, yeah. In that respect, but it also empowered me as a gay man. 
to really, really stand in my own power and say, I'm gay, I'm wonderful, I own it, yeah. and my sexuality is, is a valuable thing for life. Mm. Yeah. You know what I love, Phil, is because you feel that way now. Yes. Like your ex-wife doesn't have an issue with it, your children don't have an issue with it. It's like it's a reflection of you. Like we know, because you and I have talked about Neville and we both follow Neville and the whole oh, yes, yes. you pushed out thing, because you feel good as a gay man, you get acceptance on the outside from those people that went from watching you be technically heterosexual, you weren't, but you were in that role, to your fully authentic self as a gay man and your people that were around you have adapted with no... I mean, I'm sure it wasn't perfect in the beginning, but the evidence is you have got everyone's you pushed out, your acceptance of yourself and your self-love and just who you are now that you've gone through your journey, it's being mirrored back to you. Yes, yes. Through just being loved by your family and everybody else. Yes. Oh, can I, can I just share another valuable exercise that I've learned right, right, through personal development? Yeah. You just use the word mirrored back to you. I used to stand in front of the mirror yeah. and use those words. I am a wonderful, valuable, worthwhile person. I love and own my sexuality. Yes. Say it. Say it to the mirror. Say it to the mirror. But, hey, very, very hard at very hard at first because I look look down and you know, but, but eventually you look up and, and just, just feel that energy and that power. Yeah, and that's the Louise Hay, isn't it? That's the Louise Hay, the mirror work. That's Louise Hay. There you go again. There you go. Yes. Oh, she. she. Oh, can I? Can I? Do, uh, well, well, I've got you. Can you see this? This is on my my uh, computer. I can do it. Yeah. They're the they're the words words of Louise Hay, and I have that on my computer. Hold just up. just hold it up. A bit. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, a bit more. Yeah, there we can see it. Yeah. I can do it. Lovely. Louise. You know? And another thing, I'm going to just share, share some things I've learned, learned on the journey of self-development. Success only comes in cans. Okay. And can't, the word can't, C-A-N, apostrophe T, has a can involved in it, doesn't it? Yeah. Drop the T and what have you got? Yeah. A can. Yeah. I can. So just get out there and say, I can do it. Yeah. I can. I can, I will, and I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, another affirmation. Yes. I can, I will, and I'm going to. And, and, Amen um, to that. beg your pardon? Amen to that. <laughs> yeah, amen to that. You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I'm really, I'm really, I was, I was very humble when you asked me to come and come and talk to you, but because we have this this lovely rapport, it's just, ah, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so happy, and I just really trust, I really trust the universe. Yeah. I before before I, I, I came on before I came on speaking, I, I was, you know, had the hubble bubble going on here in the tummy. <laughs> Because hey, this, this this is going far and wide. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know. I'll put it this way: my 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 scope can reach across the world. And yeah. hey, that's 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 yeah, that's that's. I was a bit awestruck by that. Well, so I just had you know, to. You and I always got on well. We always clicked when we would get together for our coaches get together. Yes, we did. And I thought. I need to get Phil on my channel. There's people that need to hear him. <laughs> and I just thought, you know, when you, when you made me that lovely quiche and salad the other day, I yes. thought, wow, you know, it's like we don't see each other for a while. We don't talk for a while. Sometimes it's six months, ten months, but we just pick up where we left off. And I just <laughs> thought, you know, you've done such amazing work in the gay community. You've done such amazing work. You and I have discussed, and I won't go into all the details, but you have done such amazing work with people and I know there's people on my channel that could really use what you have to offer. You know, I said it to you the other day when we were having lunch, I will coach anyone that comes to me, but at the end of the day, I'm not gay and I will never understand from a personal experience what you go through. 
So mm -hmm. I think that it is important that people really go to people that have walked in their shoes. I can only yes. do so much, but you yes. have got that experience that I will never have. Yes. So I thought because you're such a great coach and because you're such an amazing, you've got such a, a, a decades of walking this path right from the time when it was a, you know, I'm not going to use it. ostracized. Yeah, totally ostracized. Yeah. That was complete nightmare in this yeah. Western country, what was going on. And not just in this country, in many countries around the world. And there are still countries around the world that yes. people are severely ostracized for being yes. gay. Yes, indeed. And in 2018, it's just, it's really not acceptable anymore. But we have to have pioneers that break those barriers and we have to be assisted by people that, uh, that move along the way and yes. help with that. And I just think that someone that's, you know, walked along that journey, I just, I just thought because we've had a few really great relationship success stories from gay people and we've had, um, and I don't want to be just a heterosexual channel. I want to be a cross-section of colour, race, culture, sexual preferences that we all come together and that it is very much about accepting people's differences and this is partly how we do it is through listening to people's experiences and hearing them and saying they're just the same as we are no matter yeah. what age color race gender culture we are we all want good relationships we all want to have a job that that, that we love we all want to have meaningful work and be able to make money to help give to our family and friends that need it. We, everybody around the world, and I can tell you that from experience now because I've coached people from everywhere, everybody wants the same thing. Yes, they do. They all do. So, you know, it's got to, it's got to, you know, that we, we, we start moving more and more towards that, a person at a time, a conversation at a time, a book at a time, a YouTube at a time, that we start moving towards that and we get to hear people and we recognise they're not so different from us. That's so, right. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, as, as you're talking, I, I, I want, just want to share this with you, particularly reach out to struggling gay people yeah. who, who may be tuning in at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, to get myself established as a coach, I, I also did, I did some cleaning work. You yeah. know, I did strata cleaning as in, as in, looking after uh, block blocks of units and, and, and you know, even t taking the garbage bins out to the street and making sure the stairwells were cleaned and all that sort of thing. And the parking areas, all that. That was, that was my job. Oh, are you there? Yeah. Oh, hello? Yes. Oh, <laughs> hello? Yes. Oh, something, as the, the screen's... Okay. Okay, good. All right. Uh, what I was going to say to you, just something that really empowered me, as I said, I was doing the cleaning work and I came home to have lunch and I just put the television on because I used to, I loved to watch Oprah when she was on, Oprah Winfrey, and yeah. that was usually on some, you know, on midday. Yeah. And I'd come home and just sit down and have lunch and watch Oprah. And she had an Episcopalian minister on yeah. And, and, you know, they're, they're, they're a very lateral thinking church from in, in America and very, very gay accepting. Yeah. And this man was talking to a group of young gay people. Um, when I say this minister, I can't remember his name. And, they, and he said these words. He said, I want to offer you something valuable. Do you realise gay is an acronym? It's an acronym. Just break, break, break the words down. G-A-Y is an acronym. Yeah. For God adores you. Oh yes, that's. Lovely. Remember, I, I shared that with you. That's so, lovely. so if, if if people if people can, that that to me, that to me was just a, a real well as 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 um, Oprah would say an aha moment. Yeah. Well, I experienced an aha moment yeah. watching that at that moment. So. Yeah. That 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 and just just having that knowledge, just having that. That listening to that and having that empowerment, yeah, that has so empowered me as well on the journey. Yeah. God adores you. 
you know, because here we are, we, we just think, well, me, I, I used to walk around thinking I was something vile and, 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 and dreadful, something putrid, some, something that was, was re, you know, repulsive to mankind, so to speak. I mean, what, what an awful stigma, to, what an awful load, load of bricks to have to lug around on your back, so to speak. Yeah. And, and, you know, just, just the journey I've been on to, to love Self-love and self-acceptance yeah. has, has um, you know, I just want to share the little, the little, little things that, that have, I've found value in and I, I, I trust that someone can take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. As, a bit, as a bit of a side salad, you mentioning doing cleaning work, I remember when I was in London, um, I just, it, I was about to turn 50. I was 49 and I was... The cleaning lady there at the Airbnb, um, she knew I wasn't working while I was there at that time. I was, you know, I was doing a little bit of coaching, but I wasn't doing that much. She really wanted to have a holiday. And she said to me, since you're in the Airbnb, do you want to earn some extra money while I go away? Can you do the cleaning for me? And I said, well, for how long? She said, a couple of weeks. I said, yeah, no problem. I thought, I'm here. I may as well. It'll, it, I can help her so she can have a holiday because she doesn't really trust anyone because she knew I knew the place really well. So she goes away and I go down. I've got on the first day, I go down and I had my bucket for the mopping to mop um, the bathrooms and I had the mop to, to mop for the main part of the pub. I was doing the pub and the Airbnbs upstairs. <laughs> So I end up, I'm thinking, oh, this will be fun. You know, I'll get a bit of physical exercise and, I, and I'm helping her. She needs, a, she needs a break. She was working seven days a week like a maniac. So I thought, you know, I can help her out. Anyway, something happened to her partner while he was over. He'd had some heart problem thing. So they want, she wanted to extend the trip. But yeah. it was right when I was turning 50 and I was supposed to go away with my partner. So it cut into my plans with my, my partner and I are born a week apart. So we were going to celebrate both our birthdays. So it totally ruined that. Yes. And one of the days I went into the toilets and it was after a Saturday night in a pub. Oh. So some guy had done a number two all over the toilet, all over the floor, on the wall. I walked in and I went, why did I not even think that this could have happened? <laughs> And I had to clean this bathroom that had poo all over the walls, all over the place. And I thought, note to self, never say yes to doing this again in a pub. Because cleaning in a pub, people get drunk and this is what you're left with. I, never, I didn't even occur to me that that could have happened. Anyway, it happened twice on my two weeks shift. And I said to her when she came back, how many times does that happen to you? She says, Oh, not very often, only once every six months. And I went, and it happened to me twice in two weeks. <laughs> anyway, I just remember going upstairs and crying because I was upstairs in the Airbnb on my own, on my birthday, cleaning up poo the day before. And I thought, this is a good moment for you because you have got to remember that some people do this every day and some people earn a very low wage for doing this every day and they have to clean up that kind of thing every day and it was a very humbling experience one I will never forget and I'm extremely grateful that I don't do that I, I mean I've cleaned and done different cleaning jobs cleaning's not an issue but cleaning that kind of thing that's a whole oh. new level <laughs> yeah. so I thought I would share that because it was a moment of be grateful for what you have because this is someone's everyday job and it's not yours. You've only done it for two weeks. So I was incredibly grateful and it taught me a very good lesson and I will never forget it. I don't think I'll ever get the smell out of my nose either. <laughs> no, no, no. no. no the, word, the word repugnant, the word repugnant really, really, oh, it, yes, I, 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 can, I can fully... Ah. I fully, fully acknowledge, fully appreciate. Oh, yes, yes, what yes. does that man eat or drink? It was just not human. But oh, nah, nah, lesson nah, learned. Nah, nah. It was a good, humbling moment, Phil. 
Yes, 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 yes. Well, the thing, the thing that I had to learn, you know, I mean, I was doing, I was doing the cleaning work when, when we were, when we were studying for the coaching. Yeah. yeah. I just had to stop and say, well, I can do better yeah. than this but without, without, be, without being condescending to others. Yes. But, you know, yes. you know, there is something better. For me. Yes. Go and go and pursue it. Exactly. And, you know, the, the heart's desire, the heart's desire has always been to, to go and lift people up, yeah. help, help them up, give, give, them a, give them a step up in some form or another. And um, we'll coaching. You will be with this interview and you will be with your ongoing coaching and you will be with all the work you've done with the gay community. Honestly, I just think, and you know there's lots of viewers on this channel that are gay and there's lots that are heterosexual and there's lots that are probably bisexual, transgender, all sorts of different categories. And I think, you know, it's such a, a credit to your self-love story. Everything that you've got today with the relationships in your life, with your kids, with your ex-wife, with your beautiful wife now and how, I mean, I mm. rarely see a relationship as good as yours. That, th thank you for that. that. That's very edifying. I, I'm grateful and I appreciate it. Yeah, I, you really, know, I really think people need to hear more people that have good relationships talk because there's so many bad relationships where people are suffering yes, yes. and it's an absence of self-love infecting those relationships. Okay. Can I, can, do you mind uh, if I just share, share uh, 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 yeah. something I've learned along the way in, in yeah. letting go? Sure. The thing, the thing you're dealing with in, in all, the, all, the, all the, is, is the pain, the heartache. Yeah. The heartache. And you have to heal, heal, heal that hurt in your life. Yeah. And you know, you know some, something valuable I learnt? Write an angry letter. Yeah. Burn it. Yeah. And with the ashes of it, Go and place it, pla uh, place it under a plant. Because uh -huh. what's a plant doing? Regenerating new life, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I, I cultivated roses when I was younger in, in, in a, as, a, as a horticulturalist. Yeah. And I, 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 uh, I in, in that process, used to go and, and Secretly, I used to go to the Sydney Botanic Garden with my little bundle of ashes and just, just you know, separate the soil and just, just sprinkle them there. Yeah. Because there were, here was a beautiful rose garden, but I was giving something of value back to life because of the people that would come to that place and enjoy it. Yeah. And I was releasing that, that stuff, that debilitating stuff that weighs you down. Yeah. With the um, you know the anger and the resentments and all that, yeah. and they don't serve you. It's poison in your system. Yeah, you've got to get it out. And that's another thing. And you know another thing, and this is what Angie and I do. When just the stuff of life, you know, the, the daily grind, and she's had to do some jobs where where it's it's been a daily grind, and the stuff of life weighs you down. We hop in the car. And we drive to, she, she was raised on the northern beaches of Sydney. Yeah. And we have this favourite beach, you may have heard of it, Narrabeen Beach, just, yeah. just over on the north side of the harbour. Yeah. And we go, she just says, she'll come home to me and she'll say, any chance we can get to Narrabeen on the weekend? Yeah, you bet, I'll jump at the opportunity. We go down to the water's edge. Yeah. And in the wet sand of the of the ebb and tide flow, we write our cares and our woes. We write those words, our cares and our woes. I'll write it and she'll write it. And then we just stand back and let the incoming tide wash over our feet wow. and wash those cares and woes and take them back. Isn't take them out to dissipate in the ocean. Beautiful. So if, if anyone, no, no pe people may not have the opportunity to get to a beach like I can, yeah. but find, find water. And yep. write, write the story and just throw it on the water. Cast, cast it away. Yeah. Let it go. Yep. Let it go. Let, let, let it just, just fade in, into, into the, the distance, so to speak. Yeah. But, but the ocean, the ocean, well, that, 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 that's, well, we experience the psychic energy of the sea when we're there. You know, we all do when we go to, the, go to the ocean. There's a lovely, wonderful psychic energy that's good for your psyche, body, mind and spirit. 
Yep. And um, we we go there, and, and that, 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 that's a little something we do. But to other people who may not have that opportunity, write your letter if if you, if you have if you want to, or just go and mentally cast your cast your cares on the water, the flowing, particularly flowing water, flowing stream, and just see it go, see it go away. Yeah. You know? And where's where's that water going to end up in the ocean? And and and. And, and do good, you know, Cause, cause, because moisture comes, comes from the ocean and, and gives us rain. I, I, that, that, that whole thing, I mean, I'm, I'm going down off on a tangent, but that's, but that's, just, a, that's, that's just, just a little something that I learned along the way. Yeah. And I just trust that if pe people can get some value out of that, well, great, I'm, I'm, that, 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 that's, that's an offering. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you know, you've, I, I guess we've got to wind up soon. Yeah. Uh, you have you have another appointment, Jude. So, I um, I just want to express my gratitude really sincerely from my heart <laughs> and say thank you, thank you so much, and Namaste. I honour the light of God that lives in you. Thank you, Phil. Beautiful. I'll be open for quiche and salad in the next week. <laughs> <laughs> you got a date. <laughs> As long as, as long as you serve it in a G string. <laughs> Do I have to promise? No, no, you don't have to promise. Just a promise. No, uh, hey. no, 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 Jim. Not a good look. Not a good look. Not a good look. Oh, God, what a love. I'll wear my best clothes. Okay, wear your best clothes. <laughs> Thank you hey. so much for coming. Thank you so much. Let's, let's, let's. I have a dream I want to share with you. I have a dream. Yep. Angie and I would love, Angie and I want to travel. Yep. Let's go and celebrate our success at a restaurant in London. You're on. Because I would love to meet your man. Yeah, right. and, and and you know you've already met met my treasure. Yeah. So I'd love to go and, and celebrate success in London, and, and and just because we want to go and see the sights of London eventually. But sounds good. Okay, okay. Here and now, that intention is going right out to the universe. And then because they're quite private, and we like to keep them a little bit anonymous, you and I can go in the corner and do a YouTube together while they're eating. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> hey. We can do a part two. Yeah, that'd be a lovely. Part two. <laughs> that would be lovely. Lovely, lovely. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. The vision is out there. The vision is out the vi there. Yes, yes, the vision is out there. Visualise it. I see myself now walk, walk, walking across the bridge towards the Great Bend, you know, the Big Bend, yeah, yeah. And, and, and standing outside the palace and talking to, trying to talk to the guards that stand there and all that sort of thing. <laughs> You know? yeah. It's a date, Phil. It's a date. Okay, before we go, I want to say to the viewers, yes, of course, I will put Phil Ryan's email address okay, okay. down below if any of you want to contact him directly. His details are there. Contact him. He doesn't just coach gay people. He coaches everyone. Obviously, yes, yes, yes. He's got a yes, specialty yes. in that area because of his experience and his his life because of his life but um feel free to contact him and i've hoped okay. you enjoyed our interview as much as we have this has been a very special interview for me because you are a friend of mine and um, it's just lovely because we've come like we've known each other for four years and you know we're, we're both further down the track now and it's lovely to reflect back on where we started and you know what we've learned so i thank you for that ryan well, I'll just share this. I'll just share this as 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 a a, a um, uh, an affirmation to to what to what to what 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 happened for about six weeks prior to you coming back to Sydney. Yeah, I got a, I get up every morning and do a daily meditation. I'd, I'd, I'd struck a rut in my life. Yeah, and I, I I was not having any success with coaching. Yeah. And I just thought, no, no, if it's to be, it's up to me. So I, I continually put put 
the energy out, but did it, in, did it as a visualisation of me talking to a group of people. Yeah. What's happened? Here I am talking to a group of people. <laughs> it just happened and you, you came on the scene and it didn't, it didn't expect because we hadn't been in touch for, for a while. No, we hadn't been in touch. So, so, yeah. so work, work, on, work on what you know. We're, we're the, Neville's, Neville's um, knowledge and, and the knowledge we've gained along the way yeah. and believe it can happen. Yeah. And just put the energy out, let it go, and put the intention out. But don't give it a lot, a lot of oh, I hope, I hope, I, pray, oh, I, hope, I hope it'll happen, I hope it'll happen. No, believe it will happen. Yeah. Just yeah. surrender. It's really that simple, isn't it, Phil? It's really it is. Simple. It is. It is. And trust. And trust. Trust, trust in the universe. Trust in life. Trust. trust. Trust in life. We have such a lack of trust in life. So yes, do you surrender? Hand it over and trust life. I think that's a big thing about the allowing you were talking about today. That, that, that's, that's the allowing process. That's what yeah. Allowing. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, beautiful. Hey, dear friend. What's up? <laughs> and here's a hug for you. <laughs> Yay. We're only 30 minutes distance from each other, so we can nearly reach. That's right. <laughs> Bill, can you stay on the call? I'm going to stop the recording. Bye, everybody. And I'm we'll do. We'll do. Okay. Okay.